Welcome everybody. Our first guest today is a former beauty queen. She is also a homeopathic medicine practitioner and also an influencer. Please let's welcome Dr. Abhinay Kavan. Hi, Dr. Hi. Hi, Zaren. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. How are you? I am doing well. How do you do? I am also doing incredible and I'm loving your background. Thank you. I put some effort for this show. <laughs> <laughs> I love I mean, it. I love it. It is an. It is an. I mean, it motivates me to. It, mm -hmm. it gave me an opportunity to uh, do something about it. So thank you. Yeah, I've been looking the whole week for this interview. So thank you so much for accepting to come to my show, and I'm just so excited that you're here right now. Thank you so much for thinking of me. <laughs> it is my first time, so. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it goes well. Are you nervous? Not, not really nervous, but I think it should say a lot of excitement. I think <laughs> as of now, yes. not nervous. Thank you for making me feel comfortable. <laughs> I I feel like you're doing perfect right now, but because you've been to so many uh, stages, you've talked a lot, so you're doing well. Honestly, mm -hmm. doing well right now. Thank you. Not really, but yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes, for now, mm -hmm. yes. All right, uh, before we move forward, besides being a beauty queen pageant, uh, would you please introduce yourself to us? Sure. I am a homeopathician and also I'm also involved in, uh, in politics and I'm the, currently I'm the vice president of Rising People's Party. So right now these two are making, keeping me busy. So that's what I want to say besides fashion and all this glam world. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, you are, you wear Miss Boca 2013, Miss Nagaland 2013 first runners up, Miss Diva Universe 2014, Miss Yamaha uh, Diva and Sleep mm -hmm. Icon Boca District. So how does it feel to have so many titles under your belt? Um, not uh, not so many titles. <laughs> I wouldn't say so many titles. There are many people who have, uh, who have lots of titles than I am. But I think that um, I, I, if, you, if you were in my position, I would, you would never... If you had known me earlier in my younger age, you would not imagine me to be uh, in this, in this um, area. Because I, that's why for me it's something to be something that makes me realize and humbles me at the same time and also encourages me that anyone can do anything, that, that type of thing. So I wouldn't say it's a lot of titles. I think it's everyone, has, many people go, uh, after me has gone further ahead, but I think this is where God has brought me. And for me, if you look at my timeline and my life, this is something to be grateful. So of course I'm grateful and humbled and amazed at how much one can do if you believe in God and yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And of, course, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when back in 2013, 2014, you were very young, I'm, I'm sure you were. So yes, you said that, yes, ab yes. During that time, it must have been immense for you to have a title like that. Yes, it was a lot of responsibility and also couldn't, oh, as, as a science student who had nothing about, who had not, not known nothing about all these glamorous thing, no exposure whatsoever, and then suddenly you are in the limelight. It was a lot of, you know, pressure was there. But then I think now I look back and I, it's, it, it was fun. And mm -hmm. I, of course, also, I wish somebody there was there to have informed me beforehand that I, then I would have, you know, prepared myself fully to handle that those situation. But anyway, all in all, it was a great experience. So I'm grateful again. <laughs> How did you handle your fame back then? Oh, no, I, 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 I think I'm very bad in, in, in handling that situation. I was afraid to even log into fa uh, the, to Facebook, social social media sites was something of a threat to me because now I'm pressured to whether to respond to those um, messages 
whether to respond to those compliments and wish, well wish from the well wishers, uh, or how to take criticism negatively. It was a lot of pressure. So I was I was very nervous. At one point in time, I I refrained to to even <laughs> to be even on social media. But yes, <laughs> now yes, nerve wracking. Yeah. Looking and back, course, yes. mm -hmm. looking back now, it must be fun. Looking back to those days. Yes, now I wish I wish I could I, I could have that moment again. <laughs> now I know I'm like, oh, how much I can do now? <laughs> Better, I mean. <laughs> yeah, Not yeah. saying I'm, I'm all, all expert and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. now I, it would have been much easier thing that type of thing. You had a good run. Mm, yes, it was like I mean, without. Any preparation for you're like pushed forward to do many things, and my intent, my I was not even a little bit pre prepared at all. I mean, what will come, and then what will go next? What to prepare? What to expect? Nothing of, of that sort. So, but it's, it comes like a surprise, and I think in that way it is better because then your expectations are kept low. So then, if you fa if there's failure. Then it doesn't hurt you much, and if, if there was success, then it's it, 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 it gives you you know still the same thing and no overexcitement, no nothing like no not proud as such that kind of thing. So I feel that I want I want that kind of a mentality sometimes when you are doing a competition. Mm -hmm. So yes, I feel that that um, focus that I have. Failure or success it was not ready to affect me in any way or not. Yes, it was just normal And I didn't feel that okay. I'm in the position that it took some time to sink in <laughs> So it was sort of that um, Feeling was there so later on that pressure came that you're you can you're in that limelight And then you're supposed to act, you have, you're supposed to behave in a certain way because now in that limelight So that's why it was difficult not difficult. But it was a hard time coping up in, to be in that position, so mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. that that was there. Mm -hmm. What would you say? What do you think made you different from the other girls while competing back then? Oh my goodness, those ladies! If I think back, they were we were all so they were all so sweet, and we had a good time. And they uh, from Miss Woka to Nagaland to Miss India, Miss Diva. Some of the girls that I know are already successful. Now, I think what made me different from them was because they, they were better. They were so much better. <laughs> that was different. But in a positive way, I think I'm better because I was very confident. Even when I had absolutely no experience or no preparation at all, that confidence, I think, made... They were all confident, but then they were prepared. And I feel I was done and no, no experience and no guidance, whatever, yet I was confident. So I think that is a difference that I should say I had. Made so you different. All the thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was a different thing that I should be, yes, mm -hmm. happy and grateful. Yeah. You having the confidence was your greatest suit, strongest suit. Yes. El yes. That alone was the only thing I had. So that made all the difference. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I want to point something. Uh, I don't know if you will remember this or not, but we met once. Let me refresh your memory. Uh, I mean, you will not remember me because I was very young back then, but I think it was in 2016, 17, you came to Cosfest, NAJ, and you were dressed oh. as a Luffy. Luffy, I don't oh know if I'm God. one piece. <laughs> God, you are also an anime junkie, huh? <laughs> I, I still am. Are you? I st mm -hmm. Oh my God, the same still thing. High. high five. High five, high five. And yes, I, I was co cosplaying uh, Boa Hancock from One Piece. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> That's See, so I have that kind of confidence now, you know, right? <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, who would have thought could pull off a character like Boa Hancock? And I That's chose Boy Hang of all Boy Hang of, of all the characters. That mm -hmm. is a difference that we were talking about just mm -hmm. a few minutes back. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. So now getting back to that, how is her personality and your personality similar? Oh, because she's a very independent woman. 
and she has that leadership quality. That's why she's a queen. And I'm not saying I'm a queen, but I also want to be that kind of a person, somebody who is, who who is uh, confident and knows what she wants. That's the kind of person I want to be. But of course, uh, she was very innocent in that May because she, she, of course, that part also a little bit, but no. <laughs> Those things made everything perfect for me to choose Boa Hancock's character anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Giving aside the looks and all those things. Yeah. Yes. You are confident and you are you are still a queen, Abini. You are still a queen. Thank you. I, w <laughs> I wish I, I wish to you know retain that title for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, were you dreaming to be in a passion since your childhood? Absolutely no. I never thought, if you had seen my photo back then, you would be like, oh my god, did you do surgery? <laughs> that is the question I get. Huh? <laughs> you've changed quite a lot, to be honest. I was, yesterday night, Thank I was you. just scrolling your Instagram page and you've transitioned <laughs> into such an amazing independent lady. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, thank God also. How did you start your journey in, in the pageantry world? Um, it's, it's, oh my god, it's embarrassing and it's, fun, it's funny also. So this uh, Miss Wokar was happening and the organizers uh, were some of my friends and they had informed me about this event. And you guess what I did? Tell me. <laughs> I, I invited myself to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I requested please to give me a chance. Please make me give me a, a time for me to perform at this one song. I was I was inviting myself literally. Now instead, the organizers put my name in it. They did registration and this, this, they met my parents. They spoke with them and they had an understanding. And that's how I contested. And my aim, my my uh, goal and my mission was a whole lot different. My, my my because what I wanted was to sing. Yes, that's what but I was just about I to say. Then I ended up being the contestant. <laughs> that was a funny turn of events, but yes, it was good. It was a good so, experience. So you did not get to sing at all. You competed. No, absolutely no. <laughs> but but look where that but look where that brought you. Yes. So so yes, my self invitation to that event had brought me into this um, the area also. <laughs> Oh, so yes, so let's talk about the confidence again. <laughs> Which brings us back to the confidence again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, during that time when you were competing, did age matter well to compete? Yes, there was uh, age validity. I wouldn't say validity, but there was a uh, maximum age uh, limit that they, they usually have in TV pageants. Uh, 20, 20, 18 to 27 years of age and I was 23 at that time I had just completed my medical college and I was about to enter internship that's why I could attend otherwise there, there wouldn't be a question of all these things you know mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to being in the medical field but mm -hmm. thankfully right after uh, and the internship there was a flexibility in, in the timing that I could join I had not given my joining yet so that's why also I could expand, ex extend my joining date for my internship. So that's why my graduation and my internship graduation was postponed a little bit, for a few months to a year, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But yes, I don't regret. So there's no regret. I'm glad mm -hmm. that I. It was all at the right time, and it, it, it took a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what do you think makes a person win such hit, immense badges? Oh, I, it, it's just a small titles that I have won, um, but I think um, confidence and also you, uh, a lot of, you have to do a lot of preparations, you need to of course, you get all the groomings these days, but back then, grooming was not up to that level, you know. Even speak, uh, even in communication skills, for that matter. Now, this the generation, the children, the I'm saying the children, the Gen Z group 
and all are very smart and are exposed to they're already exposed because of the advancement in technology but back then we we were we were lacking in all those so we need a lot of preparation hard work dedication determination and confidence i think it's many people have before me after me everyone says these things but now truly when i think about it yes your determination and your confidence nothing should break you I and mean, whatever may come you are supposed to focus on what what you wanted and go for it and that's what keeps you in that position mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i love that i believe i just love what you just said um what Thank you. has been the most difficult journey part of your journey from from being a beauty queen to transitioning to being a doctor what has been the most difficult journey oh yes thank you for asking me that question i always wanted to say this uh, because now i'm a medical student i'm in medical from a medical background now and i'm in the glamorous glam world transitioning from that to being in the medical field uh, took time because now we want people to take you seriously but we were in a generation where these days okay a little bit people are able to uh, people are able to get used to it but that back then and we want, we want people to take you seriously but we kind of I kind of felt felt I don't know about what, whether other girls have felt uh, experienced the same way or not but for me I felt that um, People not taking you seriously. I mean, of course, in this world, who we'll takes you seriously? We, we expect, because now I'm in a medical field, I want people to not just look at me as a beauty, beauty queen or model, but I also want people to take me as a doctor. So that transitioning situation was a little of a challenge, but then I, I understood, and I later on, it took me some time to, 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 to be to adjust to that situation to balance the situation so that was a challenge so yes transition from a beauty queen thing to a serious profession like a doctor and um, like a medical doctor was that challenge that I faced mm -hmm. because people didn't think that you had the capabilities to be a doctor I don't know what people thought but but I think but mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so that challenge was there, so yes. Mm -hmm. Did you always like, wanted to be a doctor? Yes, I had many dreams <laughs> as a <laughs> child. <laughs> so the doctor was one of it. <laughs> one of the, um, I wanted to be a scientist, that is a physicist. I wanted to be an IS officer <laughs> and I wanted to be oh. a doctor. So, so yes, <laughs> also a politician, yes. Now you have that. So I have to, yes, no, yes, all, all on the, on the progress, but yes, doctor, one of it has already been accomplished, so I'm grateful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amazing, you have so many things under your belt, still counting and still coming. So you are a homeopathic medicine and surgery practitioner. Tell me about what is homeopathic? Homeopathy is a German uh, system of medicine. Mm, it's homeo means uh, homeopathy means basically you're treating likes with likes. As in this homeopathy was this, uh, was founded by a German a German doctor Samuel Fred Frederick Samuel Hahnemann. He accidentally was proved. Uh, medicine while translating a dictionary from English from German to English and that were certain that particular word was uh, this this particular medicine Sincona bark it's a tree and that bark causes the bark of the tree causes malaria like symptoms so then at that time that bark was used to treat malaria so now it was that struck his mind. How come some something that we treat medicine, something that we treat, uh, call, will cause the same symptoms as a disease? So then he started uh, experimenting on all himself first and his own family members. Then he realized that uh, these these are uh, natural uh, natural resources that we have can actually cause have their own way of treating because they also cause the same 
disease-like symptoms in a human body. So that's how it all started. And so homeopathy is a very natural uh, system, natural medicine uh, approach. Very uh, absolutely no side effects, zero to less no, or no side effects. And it's one of the safest system of medicine. And I feel that. Uh, I want. I, I, the, what gave me what motivated or convicted me to practice homeopathy was because I was also a patient of uh, rhinosinusitis, if you may know the term. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was I was cured while I was still in college. That convicted me, and also I saw my senior doctors, um, professors showing a lot a lot of results, which were termed not treatable by other system. So those convicted me to practice and also chose to be in Nagaland because I wanted people to benefit out of it. So yes, it is something new, not new as such, but something different, old but something different package because now we, had a, we have a regular uh, uh, bachelor de bachelor's degree and then we're trying to uh, put a platform to people and help those people. So yes, it may take time, but hopefully it will come to the knowledge of a lot of people, to our society, and then it will choose homeopathy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, you have your own clinic, is that correct? I am hunting for a place for myself. I am, but otherwise, at this point in time, I am at a, a friend's clinic as a visiting doctor, because she's, she, uh, she's working, in other place as well. So in the morning session, I take uh, my time as at her, her clinic for now. Mm -hmm. to, I, I realize that it is difficult to find a place, even to set up for your own business, you know. It is, in it is. Mm, it's it quite is a challenge. Mm. And also because I'm a woman, oh my goodness. I know. Oh my goodness. I think women are the most hardworking, determined, and should be respected everywhere. Very much, very much. I think, yes, that credit has to be given. Mm, credit has to be due. Um, how long have you been working as a homeopathic practitioner? Now, three years. Mm -hmm. oh, three years already. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're loving what you do. Yes, I, I, because it's such a vast thing. It's a, it's not just, it's just, just what you see outside, but it's so vast. You get to know different kinds of people because we, we look into the psychological side of a, of a, of an individual. So, you, fi you find a lot of people. You meet a lot of people. You understand on. You, you, it gives you an understanding that truly, not everyone is the same. So, you, mm -hmm. so it's just, it's so interesting. It keeps you wanting more. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm not gonna get bored ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. But otherwise, I get bored easily. So it becomes boring. But <laughs> this thing is the right thing that I have really put myself into. So it's yes, mm -hmm. I'm happy. Incredible. I think at the end of the day, if we are not doing what we love, it doesn't make you happy. So I'm glad that you're doing what you love. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you know, I want to know about the location of the clinic where you're working because I also have a serious sinus, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, where is it located? Please become a patient. <laughs> <laughs> I will give. <laughs> yes. Of course, and, I will. Uh, do you want me to share the address over here? Yes, definitely. I want everybody to know because oh. I feel like so many people have sinus problems also. So, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, sure. I'm more than happy to share my uh, the the place I'm working at. Uh, it is located at Midland Colony, right opposite MGM Tower. So it's basically uh, adjacent to the uh, multi specialty clinic, and opposite to MGM Tower. Mm -hmm. It's by the name Vital Aesthetics. Okay. Nice name, uh, incredible name. I will definitely check, it, check out your clinic because I also have a serious sinus problem and I am very struggling with it. So, thank you for sharing your address. Please do visit me when you come down to Navadan. I will definitely. Uh, you are also the vice president of RBP, right? Yes, so, yes, I am. Tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, of course. Uh, like I said, I had many dreams earlier. <laughs> and one of the dreams was to be a politician. And I did not know at that time that that is supposed to be what a politician should do. Like, but basically what I thought was, because like, I don't want to say these things, but our road condition was, is, was and is so bad that I thought <laughs> I would, when I grow up, I will build roads. That's what I told my mom. My mom and I were walking down the streets. We were on our way to a bazaar, I think. And then I, I asked my mom, what should I do when I grow up in order to build the roads? And she said, she said, you need to become a politician because basically that's how contracts are uh, go, you get contracts and then you do that, those things. She didn't know about an engineering thing. But then, yes, then I said I will become a politician. And then she told me, but if you grow up and become a politician, you may grow greedy and you'll be consumed by all this power and money. And you know what? I did. Right then and there, I prayed. I prayed, <laughs> Father, I, Lord, I don't want to be. I will Grounded. not be. Uh, uh, and in our language, it's like, Orang nan that 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 was that was that was that was literally the word that we, that my mom used. So I was like, Lord, what's so orang kati jiba to kena? Like that 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 was my prayer. Yes, that yes, was like, yes. I will not go, I will not go mad or greedy over money. So don't make me go crazy or over money. That was my prayer. And yes, all this time I had something in my heart. Everyone has a calling, so to say, and I feel that this is my area of calling. And I want to. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants, everyone's calling is to serve and I feel this is my platform or this is my path to serve people and to serve God. Service mm -hmm. to men, service to God. And I feel that this is the right path that I should be doing. Otherwise, I think earning a lot of money, I may be successful in my practice and all of those things, but at the end of the day, if I'm not contributing towards what we really have a heart for, I may have all the riches, but it won't, it won't make sense. So that's one of the reasons why I chose to be in politics. But I, I didn't know that such a poli such a party, uh, a party like RPP would come up. I was only waiting and praying and hopeful that one day there'll be a there will be a time where I could I could be a part of it. And believe it or not, not because I'm not saying this because I'm in our Rising People's Party, but because. It coincided with my dream. That's why I, I chose to be in RPP. But otherwise, you can be. There are many other options, and also not because they offered me this position. Please join. That there was that, that there was not, nothing as such. I mm -hmm. just their philosophy and mine coincided, synchronized. So yes, I prayed mm -hmm. about it and I made this this decision. Mm -hmm. So yes, so I am very positive and hopeful as to where we where Nagaland is going to be in the future as mm -hmm. long as people are wise enough to you know make choices the right choices yeah. so that's yeah. the story of where I, I became <laughs> in the process of becoming a real yes. politician so. <laughs> thank it you happened. for asking me <laughs> it happened and adding back to what you said earlier um, everybody has a calling in life right some people yes. respond to it some people don't respond to it and i'm glad to see and hear that you're responding to whatever your calling is and um what does our bb actually do what do you guys do we are just a very young party it's just few months not even six months yet but right now of course we will what we will do is nor just the normal thing that other 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 pol any any other politics uh, any other political party would do. We will contest in the upcoming elections, and and we will surely uh, we are for the people. So as as of now, what we're doing, we are trying to um, recruit members who believe in us in the philosophy and uh, principles that we have. We're finding the right people. And trying to you know set up um, uh, you know set up what team we will set up working people working members and set up all these people from all parts of uh, Nagaland that's what we're doing mm -hmm. as of now and we're also uh, preparing to contest in the upcoming elections mm -hmm. that's in 2023 yes uh, I'll be rooting for you congratulations 
advance. I don't know what's going to happen. But then uh, you as a public figure, what mm -hmm. is the one thing that you feel that the need to change in, in the society? Ah, uh, our, our thinking, our mindset. I think that is the most important, important thing that we all need at this point of time. Mm -hmm. And also, second thing, if you ask me another point, be, um, uh, to be people, a man, a woman of action. We know a lot of things, no doubt, but I think it's time that we put it into action. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. First change our mindset, then we, we, we become people, men and women of, men and women of action. That's mm -hmm. what we need at this point of time. Love that. Uh, okay, just some few more questions left. As a medical practitioner, what <coughs> would you say that the health system in Nagaland is not going well? <sighs> it's, it's, um, yeah, uh, from my, for being a medical practitioner, we still lack in a lot of uh, infrastructure and other facilities but no doubt there are doctors who are really hard working and they're giving their all uh, but we also need more of um, more of the of the of my colleagues and my peers and everyone all the doctors seniors and everyone to put more, even more of an effort because i think we're in a situation where Sickness is becoming a part of life because our lifestyles have changed completely. So yes, mm -hmm. we need to put in a lot of eff more of more of an effort, and also we need a government that supports in upgrading our health system. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I agree with you. A last question in regards to your beauty world: What would you tell or encourage young girls today? Uh, if they really want, if they want to uh, pursue in the beauty pageant world, you mean? Yes, yes. Or in general, uh, people, young girls who are aspiring to be in the beauty pageant, to be a beauty queen in the future and set up an example. If you have it, if you want to do it, please pursue it. But at the end of the day, what matters the most is you and God. I mean, you need to be very strong in the Lord, because. That world is looks very clamorous and all of that, but the behind the scenes, it, it takes a lot of confidence and a lot of courage and a lot of a strong mind to survive. It is not as easy as it may seem. It's it's a harsh world. It's a it's a competition anyway. So, and there are many good, uh, able, beautiful women out there. So you're competing with those people. You need to be strong for yourself. You need to be confident, confident for yourself. But above all, God fearing, because because that's what it matters, and that's what what's going to give you, uh, retain you or sustain you in the long run. Because the glory is just for, is momentary, but you and what's going to matter for you, that is God is going to keep you. So you should fear the Lord first then everything is going to fall in the right place. That is a great advice, Dr. Avini. I hope that whoever is Thank watching you. these young girls or young guys, I hope that they feel inspired, motivated and encouraged. On that note, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back.